This is a Matchbox number 45 Ford Corsair made by Lesney in 1965. I found this recently at a flea market for $3 and grabbed it up. It's missing a small plastic boat that went on top of the car, but Lesney had the good idea to make their cars first and then the plastic add-on second. So if you lose the plastic bits, the car doesn't look out of place. Today the small boat would have been molded into the interior plastic and would be non-removable. This has more to do with safety than anything else. We don't want kids swallowing small boats. This will be a restoration slash custom. I'm restoring this car, but I want to make some changes as far as the color goes. I won't be physically altering the car in any way, so if I, or someone else, wanted to repaint the car and put it back to this pale yellow color, then that option would be open. Sort of the best of both worlds. After drilling out the post, I can get a good look at the car's condition. Besides being a bit beat up, the overall condition is good. The plastic suspension is not broken, and looking at the wheels shows that the car has not been played with too hard, or at least it was never played with on concrete. The plastic windshield is a bit worse for wear, however, so there will be some polishing in my future. The hitch on this car is still in place, so someone must have been taking care of this car in the past. Removing the paint, I can see that the car only has some light oxidation. The enamel paint did a good job of preserving the metal of this car. There's no real need to electro polish this body, instead I'll just go over everything with some steel wool. This does two things. One, it removes the oxidation and any paint residue, and two, it leaves tiny scratches on the surface for the paint to grab onto when I paint it. If I was doing a red line restoration, these scratches would completely ruin the finish, but here they're helpful and won't be seen as the primer will fill them in. Speaking of primer, that's the next step I'll be taking. I like this gray primer made by Tamiya, or Tamiya. I hear it pronounced different ways by different people. Either way, it's by far the best primer I've found. It works on both metal and plastic, and best of all, it has a pressure more closely resembling an airbrush than a spray can. As such, you have more time and more control. Last, it dries in minutes, so you can get the painting in short order. I plan to use some transparent paint on this car, so I'll need some type of undercoat. I decided to go with this Wicked Silver by Createx. It's part of their Wicked Colors line. I realize there are paints you can buy that have metal flake already in them, but I always find the flakes to be too big, and that sort of takes away from the realism. The smaller flakes look better in my opinion. Now I'll need to thin this down a little bit as I'm using an airbrush with a .3 nozzle. Most paints that are sold as airbrush ready are for .5 nozzles. Sometimes you can get away without thinning, but these flake type paints are not very forgiving. It's applied just like regular paint. Since the car is already gray, however, there's not much to see other than the car turns a bit more shiny. I decided to go with Spectraflame Magenta color for the base color. I chose Spectraflame paint as it kills two birds with one stone. It's both a color and a clear coat, saving me time. I chose Magenta because I need a color that would look good with the red interior. Normally I would choose black when there is a red interior, but I've done that on several cars to date, so I thought I would change it up a bit. In retrospect, I think brown would have looked a little bit better and would have been the color the car actually came in, but I ended up liking the magenta just fine. I gave the paint two days to cure and then started working on the details. Here I painted in the headlights and the grill with a chrome pen. I realize a lot of you want to see me do these fine details, but it's difficult to film them while also doing them. First, I'm wearing a pair of magnifying glasses that make it so that I have to get about two to three inches from the car. Second, I drink a lot of coffee, and it's hard for me to be still enough to paint these things without bumping into lights and worrying about keeping everything in frame. The same thing goes for the back tail lights. I'm using toothpicks to paint them in with enamel paint. Here I thought I would change it up by doing two colors, though I should have gone with orange instead of yellow, and the color should have been swapped, red on the bottom, orange on top. How does the old saying go, measure once, cut twice? I think that's right, that's, that's definitely what I was doing here. Moving on to the base, the oxidation is not all that bad, but I'll dunk it into my electro polishing setup to remove what is there in just a few seconds. I'll then use a toothbrush and some rubbing compound to clean up any black residue from the polishing process. Then using some metal polishing compound and a Dremel, I will polish the front and rear bumper. Not really going for a mirror polish here, just nice and shiny to match the chrome pin. I'll also polish the axle hubs and the plastic wheels a little bit just so that they have that new look to them. I clean the polishing compound off with some mineral spirits and then wash the base with soap and water. Since I'm in polishing mode, I'll go ahead and polish out the scratches in the windshield, or as many as I can get out. Some of the scratches are a bit deep. 
Once again, this is done using a cotton buffing wheel and rubbing compound. Don't use the polishing wheels sold with Dremels as they'll eat through the plastic in seconds. You can get the buffing wheels online from places like Amazon. Just search for Dremel buffing wheels. With all the polishing done, I can go ahead and put the car back together. The interior plastic was in great shape and all I had to do was wash it with some soap and water to clean off all the years of dust. Looking at the car, I sort of wish that I had just left the tail lights red. And in fact, I'll probably just go and paint over the yellow with red. I'll either get a red or a dark orange, which I think would look a little bit better. As far as the rest of the car goes, I'm very happy. The color seemed period correct, and looking at the pictures of the car on Google, I could find some red interiors. Though, I didn't find any with a towing package. Let me know what you think below, and as always, thanks for watching.